Chikamostok, place of the seven caves, is the starting point to find the exact landmark and count to found their mythical city. Tiagui, Tiagui, means in Nahuatl, go, go. Thus, Huitzilopochtli gives the order to leave. Along the way, Mexican people acquired spiritual strength and also the knowledge of the great cultures of Mesoamerica who became their teachers, the Olmecs, Toltecs, and Mayans. They sought to find the place that would mirror the order of the universe, the most evolved civilizations in the world. The Mayans among them had left a precedent. The great cultures of human history Observe that in all of creation, there are always two opposing forces coming together. Here, in the center of Mexico, these two forces were called Omeyatl, duality of creation. The number two represents the need for the union of opposites in order to create anything. This principle of duality manifests itself in people, in nature, and the cosmos. There is duality in humans, man and woman, life and death, body and spirit. We have two cerebral hemispheres, two ears, two eyes, two arms, two hands, two legs. In nature, we can see the duality manifesting as heat and cold, rain and drought, ice and fire. In the cosmos, matter and energy, day and night, rotation and translation, sun and moon, light and dark. In ancient thought, individualism is not conceived. A person is said to be odd until he forms a family. A man and a woman are like two odd numbers, one and one. That is, they are isolated and incomplete individuals. Instead, they form a couple by joining. They become a duality, create a family, and thereby acquire a social face. For example, one plus one equals two. One plus three equals four. 13 plus 75 equals 88. The sum of odd numbers always gives an even number. When observing the sunrise and sunset, two very clear points of reference are established, east and west and by locating the north and south, we obtain a quadrangular reference of the observable sky through which the astronomical order passes. The quadrangular figure that is drawn in the sky is a manifestation of the number four in the world. The Mexica people recognize that within that measure, there is an orderly and subtle energy. The number four also represents the human being by forming a rectangle with its four extremities. Each of the four limbs has five fingers, 20 in total. Therefore, the number 20 represents human beings. If the number two represents the union of opposites necessary for creation, the number four represents the orderly union of the universe. From the union of odd numbers, even numbers are formed, or complete ones. This is verified with the mathematical operation of the square root. From joining the odd, squares are formed. These represent the ordered union of a complete whole. Thus, we have four seasons in the year, four cardinal points, four phases of the moon. Number one is the seed of the origin of energy, the sun. Number two, of balance. Three, the blood as a sacred fluid that unites. And four, the union of the flesh that surrounds the essence and therefore a complete body.
Renowned sky watchers measured the periodic movements of different stars. They observed that the Sun, the Earth, and Venus maintain an important relationship of celestial coincidence points. When Venus stands vertically between the Sun and the Earth, they form an alignment or mark in the sky which served the original people to establish the principle of ascending verticality, that is, synchronous movement of eight Earth years, called solar-Venus correlation, corresponding to five synodic orbits of Venus, generating a harmonic cycle with the number 13. The number 13 is representative of the spiral magnetism of astronomical verticality and its influence that orders nature and the human being from a subtle energy calendar called Tonal Powali of 260 days or 13 scores. That's when they see the sign. An eagle lands on a cactus, devouring a snake. It is the place where Mexico Tenochtitlan should be founded. This sign is a metaphor where the descending eagle corresponds to the zenith passage of the sun. This natural phenomenon occurs when the position of the star is completely vertical. This happens only two days a year, during which no side shadows are cast at noon. The phenomenon is only perceptible in the regions located south of the Tropic of Cancer and north of the Tropic of Capricorn. Further north or further south, the sun never reaches its zenith. The date differs according to the latitude, which is due to the inclination of the Earth. So the sun lights up different areas of the planet on different dates. In Mexico City, it generally occurs in May 16 and July 27, but there may be a one-day variation depending on the solar oscillation. Sometimes it is the 26th, as corresponding to the date of the founding of Mexico Tenochtitlan. The movement of the double zenith passage of the sun, measured from the center of Mexico City, is the fifth part of its journey in a year observed from the Earth. This is 73 times 5, equal to 365, which corresponds to an Earth year. And if eight Earth years correspond to five rounds of Venus, we obtain that 365 times 8 is equal to 2,920 days number that corresponds to a count of mathematical harmony in the solar Venus correlation. In the same way, if we multiply 73 by 8, it gives us 584, which is one Venus cycle, and 584 times 5 Venus cycles gives us the same astronomical harmonic number. We observe that numbers 8 and 5 maintain an important correspondence in the Earth-Venus-Sun relationship. Thus, if we multiply 8 by 5, it gives us a quarantine, which is a period of fasting, vigil, and reflection in the human being. And when multiplying it by 73, we obtain the same astronomical number of 2,920 days, or a complete cycle of solar-Venus correlation. The period of return of the Pleiades at the zenith through the pyramids of Tenayuca and Citlaltepetl in Iztapalapa was called New Fire. Four laps of 13 years generate the number 52. Four, as a mathematical code of the order scheme in the sky, nature, and human being and 13 as the subtle core number of the magnetism of upward spiraling verticality. 
So 4 times 13 equals 52 cycles of the solar calendar or cycles of new fire. And 52 new fires times 365 gives us the number 18,980 a solar cycle. In the same way, if we multiply 73 cycles of the human account and the ceremonial count of corn, 73 times 260, it generates the same number of 18,980 as the agricultural count of corn. These figures coincide and were an important marker in the indigenous worldview, which they use as accounts of the context of perfect mathematical harmony. For this reason, the myth of such a prophesied city was to find the place of reflection of the order of the universe, Mexico Tenochtitlan. In the Anahuac Valley, the Mexica developed a great socio-cultural and political organization. It was relevant to create an environment that corresponded to the replica of the order in the universe, but also to create a context for the paradise of the Omeyocan, the paradise of mythical time. Men and women who respect the laws of nature and the universe under principles of mathematical and cosmic order. For that purpose, they built structures that correspond to this ideal of construction of humans in harmony. They created an environment of mathematical order for individuals. The Templo Mayor of Mexico Tenochtitlan is the vertical axis of the count of harmony with the universe. Where the two sacred mountains of nine levels in opposition make the subtle vertical path of the human being from the underworld to the order sky of the essence of balance, Omeyatl. According to the following text by Matos, as for the Tayolia, human essence of the heart that would go to the Mictlan, I have suggested that precisely the Templo Mayor as the fundamental center of the universe and the place where you ascend to the celestial levels or descend to the underworld represents the two sacred hills or mountains that must be crossed to undertake that journey that lasts four years, since the building in which life-death duality is present could have played that role. Sahagún mentions the locations of two bowl courts inside the great plaza of Tenochtitlan, the Tezcatlachco and the Teotlachco, Game of the Gods. The game corresponds to the constant movement of the Earth and the stars, a spiral magnetic field movement that starts from physical mobility towards intellectual evolution, which is why it symbolizes the struggle of opposites, fertility, and the human balance of life and death. An environment of mathematical harmony of 260 and 365 days is established where the energy of the human being and the energy of corn interact in a ceremonial account with that of the totally universal. On a matrix of 20 by 13 called Tonalpawali and 18 by 20 plus 5 days called Shupawali. Two important periods of this ceremonial count are from March 21st to April 29th, a 40-day cycle that marked the beginning of the sowing of the corn on the Chinampas of Tenochtitlan in the solar count and from March 24th to May 2nd, cycle of two scores that marked the time of preparation, fasting, wakefulness, and reflection as a purification account in humans prior to the sowing of the corn. In the ball game, this mathematical order of the universe is also observed. The use of representative rectangles of the symbol of the number 20 arranged in such a way that nine rectangles are visible and four not visible correspond to an imaginary line with the vertical axis of the greater temple. On each opposite side of the court, two rectangles with the value of 20 again give the number 40. So, the count on the ball court is as follows. 
9 plus 4 equals 13. 13 times 20 equals 260. 260 times 73 equals 18,980. The five central rectangles is equal to the representative number in the solar calendar as unlucky days or nemonthemi and is related to the five orbits of Venus in the Earth-Sun correlation and in the game as Makwisachiki, five flower. In each place of the opposites, there are two rectangles of 20. Two times 20 equals 40. 40 times 73 equals 2,920. Again, we get an astronomical mathematical harmony count. The moon has four phases, new, waxing, full, and waning. Each one of them exerts a special effect on the beings and the elements of the earth. On the full moon, the tides rise. The crescent moon is conducive to sowing plants that grow upwards, such as corn and amaranth. The waning moon favors plants that grow inward from the earth, such as carrots, radishes, sweet potatoes, etc. All of this is due to the impact of the subtle energy of the moon, which is represented by the number 13. Each of these phases has seven days. Therefore, the complete cycle of the moon lasts 28 days. By associating the lunar phases with the number 13, we get the following result. A 7 by 13 phase is equal to 91. It is equal to the successive sum of 1 to 13. Two phases, 7 times 2, equal to 14. 14 times 13 gives us 182, a figure that corresponds to the corn period count, from sowing to harvest. Three phases, seven times three, equals 21. 21 times 13 gives us 273, which is the gestation period of a baby in his mother's womb. At 21 days, the first organ is formed in the embryo, which is the heart, where feelings such as love and emotions are found. And finally, four faces, seven times four, equals 28. 28 times 13 gives us 364, the period of 13 moons that fit in a year. This is called the moon count. The human body has 13 major joints. The ankles, knees, hips, shoulders, elbows, wrists, and neck. The number 13 represents movement and also the subtle upward energy that goes from the earth to the sky. Joints are what give the body movement. An exchange of energy is necessary to produce movement. If we give each joint a number, we find that 12 plus 1, 11 plus 2, 10 plus 3, 9 plus 4, 8 plus 5, 7 plus 6, it all adds up to 13. 13 is the subtle energy exchange. A triangular number is one that can be arranged in the conventional shape of a triangle. The first triangular number is 1. The triangular numbers, along with other figurative numbers, were studied by Pythagoras and his followers. They considered the number 10 sacred, written in a triangular form, and that corresponds to the union of the first four numbers. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 equals 10. Now we can appreciate a rectangular triangle with the association of 13 numbers. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10 plus 11 plus 12 plus 13 equals 91. 
In the union of odd numbers in opposite position, we will always find the dual parity and the pyramidal shape of equilibrium. The association of 91 numbers on the left side with 91 numbers on the right side gives us a result 182 figure that corresponds to the cycle of corn. If we add another triangle, it continues to form a pyramid. Now we would have 91 plus 91 plus 91 equal to 273, the count that represents the gestation of the human being. If we complete the sequence with the fourth triangle, forming the up and down dual parity or the pyramidal shape, we find the lunar count of 364. Pythagoras, in his astronomy classes, indicated that the Earth was in the center of the universe and that the moon was tilted towards the Earth's equator. The ancient Mexicans also searched for the center of the lunar count. They formed a square with a 28-knot perimeter as a count of the lunar cycle and inside a square of 20 knots forming the Pythagorean theorem triangle with the lunar count the ceremonial corn count, and also four basic dates as a center. In this way, the Valley of Mexico became the landmark of the center of the lunar count. Mexico literally means place of the navel of the moon, which means the center of the moon. The word comes from mestli, moon, shikli, navel, and ko, place. But from what we have learned, we can specify more. Mexico means the center of the lunar count, and it is where the replica of order in the universe was conceived. In this image from the Mendocino Codex, the Valley of Mexico is represented in the center of four triangles, that is to say, of the symbol of 4 times 91 that adds 364 and that also corresponds to 13 times the cycle of the moon of 28 days. This also means that the Valley of Mexico was considered the center of the quadrangular figure formed by the count of the faces of the moon and the number 13. In that sense, it is the center of the lunar count. Mexico is the sacred land of one of the most important cultures of humanity. It is the place that was considered by our ancestors as the center of the universe the place of replication of order as the heart of the lunar count. Let Mexico be reborn in all its splendor as one of the most important cultures in the world and the thought structure of collective order which can still be relevant and teach us to live in harmony. Tlazocamati, thank you.